Hi, I'm Carolyn Grimes, and you're watching the Plastic Surgery Channel. Today, you'll hear from some of the top board-certified plastic surgeons in the world as they answer your most personal plastic surgery questions. You'll also hear the latest tips, techniques, and trends in cosmetic surgery. Learn how you can get rid of sun damage and find out about a new procedure that sounds like science fiction. Surgeons taking fat from where you don't want it and putting it where you do. We want to know your most personal plastic surgery questions, so we hit the streets to find out what you're curious about. Every summer I get brown spots on my face. Is there anything I can do to get rid of those brown patches? Well, the short answer to the question is yes. There are some things you can do about it. But this is a case where an ounce of prevention may be worth a pound of cure. If you take the precautions, use sunscreen, limit your sun exposure, you may not develop the problem in the first place. But beyond that, if the patient does develop dark spots on their face, uh, there's any number of treatments, anything from topical creams to lasers. I have heard that you can take fat from one place and put it in another part of your body. Is that true? Is that true? Can we now do that with fat grafting? Well, absolutely. And I have to say, you know, I've been in private practice 25 years. Fat grafting is the most exciting thing that I've seen happen or will see happen in my career, I believe. You know, this is the holy grail, right? We've joked about this for years. Can you take fat out of my tush and put it, you know, wherever, breast, face? Yeah. And the answer is, we can. Uh, Lee, I know you've been doing this for years. What are your thoughts? Well, I agree. You know, 15 years of fat grafting, it seems like every year I find a new application, a new way to use it, and the techniques are refined more and more over the years. From using it as an alternative filler after mm -hmm. using Juvederm if someone really likes the look and wants something more permanent, to softening the borders around implants, breast cancer reconstruction, uh, primary grafting to the breast, uh, the field just continues to expand. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think the other important point is that the process of getting a good result with fat injection involves much more than just simply injecting fat. And so that's why it's really important for patients to understand that they need to seek an expert, a board certified plastic surgeon that understands the surgical anatomy thoroughly to get a good result. Absolutely. This is so, I think, in the experience I've had, it is incredibly technically demanding. And if you don't do it correctly, you're not going to get good outcomes uh, for your patients. So it's technical, it's artistic and not everyone is going to be good at that and that's why you need a board certified plastic surgeon with a lot of experience. So the takeaway for patients is yes it can be done but just make sure you go to a board certified plastic surgeon. Absolutely. Right. Stay with us, we have much more straight ahead. Coming up, we'll show you how you can take years off your age in just minutes. Have a question you'd like to ask? Log on to theplasticsurgerychannel.com and find the Ask a Doctor button you'll get an answer from one of our board-certified plastic surgeons. Physicians trust Biocornium Plus to heal scars quickly. The first and only FDA-cleared scar management product with silicone and sunscreen. At Meridian Plastic Surgery, we're committed to your personal safety, comfort, and satisfaction. We utilize the latest techniques in plastic and reconstructive surgery to provide you with excellent care and results. Whatever your plastic surgery needs, you'll be treated with respect and compassion. At Meridian Plastic Surgery, we're proud of our meticulous attention to your individual needs and desires. Visit us today. This segment of the Plastic Surgery Channel is sponsored by Pacira Pharmaceuticals, makers of Expirel. Injectable fillers, are they the key to staying young? We followed a patient through the process. Let's watch her story. Meet Jolie, a working, busy mother of three children. She says she was looking tired and family and friends were noticing. She had Botox in her forehead, and that made a big difference, but she still needed a little more help. So we made her an appointment to have some fillers injected. In all, the appointment took just 15 minutes. It didn't hurt half as bad as I thought it would at all. I thought it was going to be so painful, and it wasn't. It was just a little stick and a stick, and then it was over. Now let's take a look at her before and after pictures. 
you know, fillers are expanding in their use and where we're using them with new products coming out, but traditionally the two areas that were treated early on in the mainstay are the nasolabial folds and the marionette lines. Mm -hmm. And I think she did have a little filler right, Dr. Adams, right here. And that, that makes a big difference. You know, it's, it's really the understanding of volume in the face has really revolutionized how we think about facial rejuvenation. I think one thing that's been a huge improvement in the last couple of years with fillers is the addition of lidocaine to the fillers. Uh, several years ago it was uh, painful and patients had problems getting them and now it's uh, become almost a pain-free procedure. Yeah, and it's quick and easy and affordable, but it doesn't last forever. Well, no, and that's a really important point. Uh, uh, a downside, if you will, to fillers. Uh, people enjoy the effects and uh, providing they're not overdone. You know, I think that's, there's another important point. Uh, I think fillers are kind of like breast implants. Too much of a good thing uh, can get you in trouble. And uh, so you have to be judicious. Probably better, especially starting out for a young lady like this, less is more. You can always add a little more. You get too much in, you can correct it, but you know, it's better not to have to do that correction if you can uh, avoid it. And we recently talked to one of our board certified plastic surgeons about fillers and he explains what to avoid. It's a scary look, but you know what it is and it just doesn't look good. A filler face is that girl that you see at the mall or sits across from you at work and you, you kind of got to look at her through the corner of your eye. It appears that it's too much, or it's too much in the wrong place, or maybe it's no longer time for a filler and the patient needs to progress to a surgical procedure or a laser procedure. The upper should be one-third, the lower should be two-thirds. And if that proportions out, you can see it very, very quickly. If your practitioner doesn't have a good sense of proportion, you can very quickly become filler face with the lips. If a little is good, a lot is not necessarily better. The parentheses lines uh, are a place that are commonly filled. Anatomically, they're called the nasolabial folds. But unfortunately, when the tissue descends, if you try to fill that area, and it's a very common place, the center of your face looks too full, too fat, and out of balance. First and foremost, is to pick the appropriate practitioner, somebody who is a core physician in training with injectables, plastic surgeon, a dermatologist, someone who has a sense of aesthetics. If a little is good, a lot's not necessarily better. Adding volume to the face has really allowed us to get a more natural result. Dr. Wall, how have fillers and Botox changed the field of plastic surgery? Well, I think they've been very helpful in delaying the need for surgical procedures on the face, maintaining a youthful look longer. Mm -hmm. um, but it's temporary. At some point, you probably will need a surgical procedure. But I think it's made it more mainstream. People can afford fillers and Botox, and, and it's been very helpful in our practice. You know, some patients are confused about where fillers work best and where, say, mm -hmm. Botox works. Lee, how do you handle that? Yeah. Well, you know, it's one of the most important things to educate a patient on, and it is there is a big delineation between the two. You know, Botox is a paralytic agent, and we use that in areas where people have dynamic wrinkles, meaning that the expressions of the face create a wrinkle, and the Botox is used to either weaken or paralyze that muscle. You know, the classic place is being in the... Uh, crow's feet area in the so-called 11s and in the forehead in general. Whereas with more static wrinkles that aren't primarily caused by facial movement in the nasolabial folds, in the marionette lines, other places where volume needs to be restored, that's where we use fillers. And that's a broad delineation between the two, but it's important that the patient understands where you use the difference between these two, two products. And fillers and Botox have brought a whole new population of people into plastic surgeons' offices. That they're people that would never have surgery, but would consider something like a filler or Botox. So it's really expanded the patient population. And I think it has become real mainstream. I mean, most people are doing something, or it's available to them, and they're open to it. Don't you think? Absolutely. And and you know, it is important that people realize, though, these things don't last. Um, particularly with the toxins, Botox or Dysport. Uh, those types uh, need to be reapplied every three to four months, uh, depending. And uh, with fillers, you get much more time. 
depending on the type of filler and, and where it's placed, sometimes it, they can last for months. Uh, but you do have to warn people that you'll see that effect go away. And, of course, they're hooked usually by then. They like the improvement that they've seen. But it does buy them some time prior, like you said, Holly, before they may have to undergo the knife for a, a more drastic procedure. Now, taking off a little bit from what Mark said, where it's brought a whole new group of patients into the practice, mm -hmm. what we just saw, it's also brought a whole new group of practitioners into the practice of, of our area of plastic surgery. And I think that you, patients have to be very careful about that because we're all very well trained in looking at proportion, looking at balance in the face, and above all, we're trying to restore balance and restore youthfulness, mm -hmm. but not overdo it. So you have to really be careful because we are seeing at the same time more patients coming into these procedures to our offices. You also see these awful jobs where you know, the patient looks like they just got out of a boxing match and, and they're going to look like that for a year, year and a half if, uh, mm -hmm. in many yeah. cases. There are other specialties. I mean, we've got dermatology colleagues and facial plastic surgeons uh, who are excellent at this as well. But again, it, it is important that the patient do their homework, not just look for a good deal. Right. Uh, because, right. you know, you mess this up. And, and well, a lot of these things look simple on the yeah, surface, yes. but they look simple and easy because the person doing it, uh, if the board-certified plastic surgeon, makes it look that way. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And there's a lot of offers out there online and in Groupon and saying, you know, with good deals, but patients just need to know the experience of the injection. Yeah, you take your car to a, a bad mechanic, yeah, you can go get a new car. Mm -hmm. you, you mess up your face with some of these things or, or any cosmetic surgery and... Uh, it's a pretty big pri price to pay. Coming up next, our surgeons sit down to debate some of the most controversial topics in plastic surgery. Stay with us. To learn more about plastic surgery, log on to theplasticsurgerychannel.com and visit us on Facebook and Twitter. Biocornium Plus, a proven silicone scar treatment with SPF. Easy to use, dries quick and clear, and makeup applies effortlessly on top. This segment of the Plastic Surgery Channel is sponsored by Pasira Pharmaceuticals, makers of Exparel. I've heard some things about a scarless breast lift. Is this true? Yes, uh, this is really becoming a reality. And, you know, it's one of those things, and I'm a skeptic. It sounds too good to be true. Yeah, it probably is. But I've got some experience now using some suture and some mesh where we can actually take a breast, lift it up without a bunch of scars. It's pretty exciting stuff. Well, I am a skeptic, and I do think it sounds exciting, but we're really not there yet. And, you know, we do have issues with permanent sutures that are staying in the breast, and this is an organ that has yeah. bacteria inherently there. All right. Are me... these things mammographically silent? How are they going to interact with the breast? We really have to be careful okay. stepping out of this. I hear you, in, I hear you. but come way. on, Granddad. Let's get with it, all right? I mean, we, we've got to move on here. If we can do surgeries without scars, that's what our patients want. You know they hate the, seeing those scars on the breasts or anywhere. So this is a way to do it. So let's, let's look at it. Mammographically, this stuff doesn't show, right? And it's suture. You've been putting suture in people's bodies forever and still do. So how is that a big deal? I mean, all this has been proven safe. So let's give it a try. I don't know. We're not really sure yet about this. I do think that it's an exciting area. I think that we also have plenty of experience with permanent things that we've put in the breast causing problems before not such as implants that go under the breast, but you're talking about this, this in the central tissue, in the parenchyma of the breast. You know, this is an area that really, really needs more work before we're ready to take this to the public okay, on a right. large scale. All right, well, I'll do that work, and I'll show you, and we'll talk about this again. I think that'd be great. All right. Great topic. Thank you, doctors. Coming up, celebrities and plastic surgery. At Meridian Plastic Surgery, we're committed to your personal safety, comfort, and satisfaction. We utilize the latest techniques in plastic and reconstructive surgery to provide you with excellent care and results. Whatever your plastic surgery needs, you'll be treated with respect and compassion. At Meridian Plastic Surgery, we're proud of our meticulous attention to your individual needs and desires. Visit us today. 
BioCorneum Plus, the only topical silicone scar treatment product with proven results in clinical studies. This segment of the Plastic Surgery Channel is sponsored by Pacera Pharmaceuticals, makers of Exparel. Welcome back. Celebrities are constantly in the news for their alleged plastic surgery procedures. Sometimes they're good and sometimes bad, but it's always entertaining and quite often there's something we can learn. Here we have Angelina Jolie. Her recent medical scare has been well documented. Actress Angelina Jolie recently announced to the world that she opted for a double mastectomy in the face of overwhelming odds of contracting breast cancer. Such a personal decision used to be made knowing that your body will be forever damaged. Now new plastic surgery procedures can not only replace breast, but create a look that will restore confidence. Jolie made it a point to describe the unwavering support of her partner, actor Brad Pitt. She's certainly shown if you do your research and um, you make your decision what's best for you, it doesn't have to be a scary thing. Jolie chose to make her decision to go public to give those considering such an option hope that there is a way to remain emotionally intact. Let's talk about the process of breast reconstruction. Dr. Adams, is it painful? I know it's painful, but how do women feel about going into such a big surgery? The reality is that pain is in number one or two in the priority list of every patient that's going to have surgery. And so the good thing is that there's been a lot of things that we do to really enhance the experience of the patient with surgery to minimize pain and other factors that, that create anxiety. Don't you think, Bruce? No, a absolutely. And, you know, unfortunately, um, Angelina was in a situation here. She had to make a, a tough choice. Right. And... Um, with that, there's some trade-offs, and, and part of it's having surgery, and there's going to be some pain. I mean, it's surgery. Uh, but we're trying all the time, and, and industry has helped us coming up with new products and different techniques, and, and we're trying to do as much as we can as the surgeons to make this process less painful, uh, more comfortable. But we've got to be realistic with people. There's going to be some of that. It's really a partnership with the surgeon and the patient. We've got to be honest with them, but tell them we're going to be there to help them and try and make it as easy as we can. Thousands of women go through this surgery each year. Let's take a look at what science can do to make the process just a little easier. I think this is a real breakthrough. This is a real leap forward in just how we treat surgical patients, how we deal with surgical pain. It's what surgical patients have been waiting for for years. You know, it's been a hundred years since we've had probably any significant new advancement. And just the idea that we can block the pain for a longer period of time after surgery is a huge benefit to patients. Meet Dr. Richard Baxter, a plastic surgeon in Seattle, Washington. He's talking about a revolutionary medication that provides prolonged pain relief to surgical patients. The new medication is called Exparel. It works the same way other local anesthetics do. The difference is it lasts a few days instead of a few hours. During surgery, toward the end of the operation, we inject it into the area, and then it, it just slowly releases there over several days. I use it a lot in abdominoplasty in particular as part of a mommy makeover. That's made a big difference for those patients. I use it for breast augmentation patients and a lot of revision breast surgery. Baxter says it helps patients get through the pain they experience in the first few critical days following surgery. One of his recent breast revision patients is Kathy Smith. She's been through breast reconstruction surgery not once, but twice. In my mid-20s, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. I'd, I'd found a lump and went in. and. It was shocking. I was numb through the majority of it and went through a mastectomy with reconstruction. Then 21 years later, I was diagnosed with breast cancer for a second time. On her second go around with breast reconstruction, Kathy says the difference was like night and day, thanks to new developments in technology. The first surgery, I was in the hospital for five days. And the second surgery, I was in for two days. Oh, the patients love it. Just the idea that they feel good. I call them up in the evening and, you know, they answer the phone themselves because uh, they're up and having dinner and feeling pretty good. Baxter says this new medicine can often diminish the need for narcotics altogether. The side effects for narcotic medications include things like nausea, vomiting, 
uh, just mental side effects, people don't like the way it makes them feel. Just this long list of things that if you can avoid those, it's a real benefit. Getting back to work faster, being, out, being able to get out and socialize quicker, it made a huge difference in, in my recovery. If someone was afraid and putting it off, what would you say to them? If they were afraid because of the discomfort or the pain of it, I would say that's a temporary, minimal part of it, not to be afraid of that. Dr. Elliott, is scarring a common concern for most women? Well, of course it's a concern for any woman that's going to go through surgery. And it's important for the doctor to, in addition to discussing all the other things that are going on that are going to occur with their surgery, to talk about scarring and what you might be doing after surgery to help minimize and manage that scar as the postoperative period goes on. What do you think, Dr. Thornton? Well, I agree. It's certainly one of the top things that women are concerned about. You know, we've been on the topic of breast cancer and breast reconstruction. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are a lot of newer techniques that we're involved in that when we are always looking to improve scarring in, in any kind of surgery, particularly breast, you know, these days with nipple sparing mastectomy that uh, can occur in select patients, mm -hmm. skin sparing mastectomy that's been around for a while, we start in the beginning of the surgery in our planning stage, planning for how we're going to place a scar, how we're going to disguise a scar, and then it goes through good technique in the operating room and then following up with post-operative management of the scar. So, you know, it's something that we have to involve the patient in, and it's a concern from before we start surgery until way after surgery. When you talk about post-operative, what are some things patients can do at home? So we try to look at sometimes, you know, how have you scarred before, and again, set their expectations. But then there are some topical things that we can do. There are silicone gel sheeting, there's some topical scar treatments. Some of these may work a little better than others. Uh, but at the end of the day, tincture of time is a big part of it. And you've got to remind people, you know, these aren't going to go away. We've got uh, some techniques with laser that we can use to improve. And th these are really evolving. And I think we're seeing, um, you know, we are interested. We want our patients to look good. We're invested in good outcomes. And so uh, we're going to try and help them. But all the while, there's still going to be some scars. But I would say that what's really important is that you have to always look at the science and what the data is because there's a million different things out there. You go to the drugstore, you see a hundred things on the shelf, and the reality is a lot of those don't work and have no scientific basis behind them. But Bruce mentioned a couple that are, are proven, silicone sheeting, topical silicone gels. Those do have good data behind them. And honestly, if a patient can do any of those things, as long as they do it and are compliant with it, that's going to be the best additional thing they can add to what we would already do surgically to give them the best scar possible. And they need to avoid UV radiation sunlight to a scar as well. I don't know how many times they get asked how soon can I go back into the tanning bed and things like that. So again information is important. You need to let the patient be aware of all this up front so that they can know what's going to be the best way to manage the scar after surgery. Let's move on to a little bit lighter topic. The celebrity mommy makeover. How do they get their body back so quickly? Here's Jennifer Lopez. She gained 50 pounds with her twins. How do they do it? Dr. Wall, you do a lot of mommy makeovers in your practice, and we have you talking about the top five procedures that women can do to get their body back. Let's watch. The vast majority of my patients are women who've had their children. They, maybe the kids are in school now, so they might have a few free hours during the day and they're interested in getting themselves back. Probably the main complaints, say from head to toe, is they look tired. They don't want to hear that ever again. I think that Botox and filler is just such a quick rejuvenation. Even their husbands can't tell what's different, but they just look better, less tired. I think the pregnancy always stretches out your muscles. If I can, I would always prefer to do a tummy tuck with some liposuction. I think that that just provides such an amazing change that is so long lasting. Hopefully you can get away with just implants, but sometimes you need a lift. It really improves your confidence. It doesn't change you as a person. It doesn't even have to change your clothes. You can still wear the same clothes you have, you're just filling them out a little bit better. For those patients who are in great shape but just really have some trouble areas, 
There's Cool Sculpting, which I think is a, a brilliant, non-invasive device that really helps people that just have exercise resistant areas. In those patients that can't have Cool Sculpting, liposuction is a great option, but it is a procedure. You feel like you've had the squats work out of your life, but you're up and doing everything within the day. Dr. Wall, how soon do you see women coming in to, you know, asking for a mommy makeover? Well, I think if they could, they would come the week after having a baby. But you need to be realistic about timing, and you want your child to be a little bit more mobile, make sure you have enough help to recover. So typically, you want to wait till the child is at least one year old, definitely done with breastfeeding. It depends on what, what things you're looking at. I think people like J-Lo, yeah. She's obviously genetically blessed, and she's living every woman's fantasy of having a personal chef, personal trainer, and Mary Poppins in her house, mm -hmm. but most of us don't have that, and right. we need to wait till it's realistic that we can then have our mommy makeover. Because her results aren't typical, are they? Uh, I guess for you. some. Yeah, especially for having had twins. Um, my wife's had twins, and she did great with the first pregnancy, a single, but boy, with twins, mm -hmm. all that stretching... Uh, most women are not going to turn out like that without help from us. I think there's a little help going on from some Photoshop. What do you guys think? <laughs> I think it spanks, or either she went to a rap <laughs> That's party what I think. and they yeah. still haven't taken yeah. the cellophane off yeah. yet. But, but it, yeah. it also speaks to the point if someone is really taking care of themselves, right? Uh, you know, what but, but, they can do on their own, then a plastic surgeon can help them, but they can also play a big part in what, what uh, results they're going to get. That's true, Mark, but I think it's important to be honest with these people because sometimes these patients are beating themselves up and they can hire three personal trainers. Once they've stretched those muscles apart, I, I don't care. You know, sit-ups, crunches, they have nice, strong muscles, but that can't bring them back. So, I mean, there's definitely some things, or the skin being stretched beyond its ability to come back. That's when they need to come talk with one of us to see what the options might be. And what Holly said is, is, is exactly the case, that genetics are a huge factor. Mm -hmm. You can see people have had six pregnancies and have not one stretch mark on their body, and somebody has one pregnancy and has a thousand stretch marks, and yeah, that's, that's all true. genetics. And, and that variability is also important in individualizing the patients because, you know, you do see patients get back or at least get to a stable point in different lengths of time, and Holly brings up a great point in terms of, you know, when the baby is mobile and when the woman is able to do these things and have a good recovery. But likewise, you know, you see some patients that the changes post-pregnancy stop after three or four months in some cases. Sometimes those changes go on and they're getting their body back naturally over a year's period. And I usually tell patients, we want to wait until we have a stable playing field. So right. I want to see at least two months of the body not changing anymore where they can look back and say, yes, I know since April nothing has changed then we can proceed when we're not having dynamic changes going on after pregnancy. Thanks, doctors. Thanks for being with us. We hope you enjoyed this episode of PSC TV. If you'd like more credible information on plastic surgery, check us out at theplasticsurgerychannel.com. We'll see you next time.